Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. Swift is in the news again. Everything is about to change. And how about this deep state confiscation theory? SEC's pay to play. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.78 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off by 1.2%. $69,900 plus for Bitcoin, $3,500 plus for Ethereum, $104 billion plus market cap for Tether. XRP, $0.63 cents at the number six spot. We're up one7 on the 24, and we're up 4.5 on the seven day. The range of price very quickly between 61 and 64 cents. We're sitting smack dab in the middle. We'll keep an eye on it. A reminder right here that the U.S. government warns mounting debt could crush the U.S. dollar. Make no mistake about it. This is why I'm here. I believe Ripple and XRP play a major role in the new monetary system that we're headed towards. And this is one of the main reasons that we're headed towards it. So that's why I'm showing you that today. And then there's this here, a chart from Egrag Crypto. That's right, are one of our Hall of Famers here. Gold over the past few months have been closely monitoring gold charts. They're flashing a warning sign. There seems to be something wrong in the system. If you've bought gold at or below 2000 consider it your insurance policy. And there's calls now for gold to go to 3000 and it's already at all-time highs. So... This is why I tell you I've been accumulating metals, precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and you can too at the very best prices at Miles Franklin. All you have to do is two things. Send an email, info at milesfranklin.com, link underneath the video here, information for you, and put in the subject box, dig gold, D-I-G gold. You will not be sorry and get, look, look at all these products. Look at all of these products. You cannot get anything, any better prices, any better selection than you're going to right here at Miles Franklin. Make sure you tell them I sent you and said, come on in. Make sure you put dig gold in that subject box. And then here we see right here, Eleanor Terrett reminds us, so what's next for Coinbase following Judge Falia's ruling dismissing the, uh, uh, denying the motion to dismiss the case? The court will set a full discovery schedule and each side can request documents for the discovery process. Sources familiar with the matter tell Eleanor some of this case could be undermined and exposed through discovery, so Coinbase will attempt to get as much discovery on the SEC as they can during this process, and the SEC will do the same. I remember during the Ripple case, the discovery process acted like a window into the mind of the SEC. We were able to see what the agency was thinking and saying internally in regards to Ripple and the wider crypto industry. The same will apply here. In terms of timing, as we know from the Ripple case, discovery can take uh, many months and then you have the process of filing for summary judgment briefs and then a potential trial on top of that. So this case will drag out over a year at the very minimum. In the meantime, I'm told one of Coinbase's uh, more near-term options could be to file an interlocutory appeal on some or all parts of the denial of the motion to dismiss if the lawyers think it makes sense to do so. Excuse me. The SEC filed a request for an interlocutory appeal following Judge Torres's summary judgment decision in the Ripple case, but they were ultimately denied interlocutory appeals before final judgments are notoriously hard to obtain. So that's the latest we have on that as that continues to unfold. Now, here is a shot from Chris Larson right here who absolutely nails what's going on in the SEC and the lack of clarity is something that Gary Gensler feeds on. Look at that, the judge really admonished the SEC, uh, really called them out in a way that you don't really see very often. I think it's just more proof that Gary Gensler's uh, decision of sort of engaging this regulation by enforcement, rather than getting clear laws, he knows they're not clear. He just likes that lack of clarity, 
so that he can go after anybody and make up the rules as he goes along through bullying. And that's not the American way. This should be a Congress. We should have clear rules from the legislatures, not through these sort of unelected, power-hungry, and really misplaced decision makers that you see in Gary Gensler. That, the there judge you have really it admonished right there. the SEC. I don't think you could say it any better than Chris Larson said it. And here we know that all of this is coming to a head because SWIFT completes a second testing phase of its central bank digital currency interlinking solution. Make no mistake, this is going this way. This is where the world is going. I'm not happy about central bank digital currencies either, but that's why I'm trying to get my family as wealthy as possible because there's only two kinds of people in this world, and it's the haves and have-nots. And for the first half of my life, I saw what it's like to be treated as a have-not. I think I'll try it the other way this time around for the second half. Let's listen to what George Gammon says as he's discovering what SWIFT is doing with their new CBDC uh, platform and testing they're introducing. And he says everything is about to change, and he's right. Start off by highlighting parts of the executive summary. CBDC development is accelerating, but action is needed to achieve interoperability. In other words, giving us all the control. <laughs> we, do, we do need to dot a couple more I's and cross a couple more T's before we have total and, uh, total and uh, unbridled control over your spending and your finances and all that cash on your balance sheet. First thing I highlighted, more than 130 countries are now exploring a CBDC and research by OMFIF has found that almost 70% of central banks expect to issue a CBDC within the next decade. And I would say probably more than that and sooner than that. And he would be right because we're following this space and what's going on in that particular area. And listen, I... I have reached out to George Gammon and his team before, and I know he's not a fan of crypto, but we could certainly have a great conversation. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind tagging him, I'd love to sit down with him, my channel or his. He's so smart. I have such a respect for the guy. He says here, as he shows this diagram, what's this look like to everybody? He said, I downloaded the new Swift CBDC report so you don't have to. This simplified diagram tells you what you really need to know. Money is simply a network of bank ledgers. They want to consolidate and centralize the ledgers. The solution is a decentralized ledger. Yes. And in fact, the XRP ledger because the XRP ledger is also serving as a decentralized exchange for the world for which all of these particular networks can plug into to get the best market built using XRP as a bridge where applicable. This is where we're going, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we're going. And we can't see the real motion in this market until we have stable coins and CBDCs and other tokenized uh, real-world assets, because that's what I believe is so important about stablecoin legislation. It's not just for dollar stablecoins. It will be tokenization for all of the traditional markets, commodities, stocks, bonds, derivatives. You get it, right? So that's why we need that, because once we have that, you'll be able to have these digital tokenized vehicles to move all this value around. And here we have a new theory here, which I don't know how new it is because I think this is exactly what's been going on. You guys know I have referred to it as uh, a pay to play. You've heard me refer to the SEC lawsuit as pay to play or an audit or vet it process. We know the same thing happened to Microsoft. They were sued by the SEC. The SEC sued Tesla. The SEC sued Amazon. And I have said it multiple times, and going by who the SEC sues, you could almost use them as a great barometer for what to invest in. Not financial advice, but nevertheless, they're suing Ripple. So I see good, good things ahead is what I'm seeing here, ladies and gentlemen, no doubt about that. Uh, let's listen to what Molly Elmore says right here. All right, a couple of things. One, Gary Gensler has done us a service by having those MIT courses uh, publicly mm, available. Mm, yeah. And in one of those courses, he said that if you want to move in to the banking world, the legacy, the, the legacy banking system, the monopoly, you got to like pay up like in the mob. You've got to, you know, pay the mob, Don, of the, the other family if you want to enter into a new market. 
And so this is what the fine looks like to me is they've conceded that XRP is going to be used and they're like, right. we want our, our kickback like right. in an organized crime. That's right. Now, this will be the interesting thing that people haven't really discussed. Like, all right, so I don't think Ripple's going to have to pay $2 billion because yeah. they have very good lawyers that will hopefully negotiate on their behalf. Let's even say they had to pay a billion dollar fine. Right, right. What do you think they're going to pay that fine in? Mm. XRP. Right, so the <laughs> cartel's like, we wanted 50% of the XRP in the beginning. If you had just given us half like wow. we asked, and we wouldn't have wow. given you a hard time, but you didn't really want to be controlled by the mob, so you said no. Wow. But now, at the end of it, we're still going to take our cut if you would like us to get out of the way and let you do your thing. And there's where we've been seeing it. And, you know, uh, for those of you that are in the DPMG, I used to do a weekly show with Molly Elmore and she's super fantastic. You know, she's really brilliant. And I think this is so spot on. She has said multiple times and I have adopted it myself because I think it's the right way to see governments around the world and political parties, you know, gangs, cartels, right? Thugs, mob. That's the way to see these entities. And, you know, it's the, for me, it's the simplest way to understand it. And that's where it comes into pay to play. And I think it's exactly what's going on here. No question about it. And let us not forget, too, by the way, uh, you know, don't forget about Jed McCaleb's taco stand wallet. Who bought all of that? Did the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury buy it all? And who will get the $1 billion fine or whatever that fine is if they pay it in XRP? The U.S. government. That's who. Meanwhile, here's another piece to this amazing threads that Ashley Prosper has been putting out. This time it's Africa and some other countries here. And I'll just leave this here and you can look at it on our profile. I know we don't have a lot of time to look into this video today, but I encourage you to follow Ashley Prosper. Follow all of this information. There is so much stuff. And I remember reporting on a lot of this stuff, but you just forget it's too much information for you to be able to retain it. And I think that's what the, the process has been for her is to go back and run through all of these different facts from each different country and region of the world to remind ourselves of just how much has gone on. And this is a clear reminder, 36 countries with Onafreak, which used to be MFS Africa, if you remember, they rebranded. So 36 African nations. I mean, that is just absolutely remarkable. And that's just Africa, ladies and gentlemen. I showed the America one this in the first video this morning. My goodness, go look at that. It is just overwhelming. Now, I want to, hear, I want to play this clip for you talking about T plus zero settlement, which means same day trade execution and settlement is a game changer for traditional finance. And this is Brooks Entwistle from Ripple sitting on stage here at Token 2049. But, um, you know, you're very passionate about zero settlement times and that's a major innovation from stable yep. coins. Um, tell me from a trading perspective, like what do you see blockchain infrastructure doing for global trading? Yeah, I mean, crypto traders are pretty spoiled, frankly, because of the existence of stable coins. Um, if you talk to someone in crypto and you say, hey, T0 settlements, that's pretty cool, right? That question is, that comment is almost not understood by people in crypto because we're so used to it. Um, most traditional assets, if you want to settle, if I'm sending you a bond that I owe you, that's going to take two days. Um, some transactions take longer. The ability to settle transactions not only in the same day, but often in the same, you know, 10, you know, sub one second block, that is a superpower. And to me, when I think about what are the things that blockchain allows that are going to move past crypto markets and into TradFi markets, stable coins in general and T0 settlements in particular, that seems to me to be the first thing that will be really exported into larger scale finance. Right, right, right. There you have it right there, but I'm not done with you just yet because you remember this. This was when I played to you uh, all the way back in 2022 when Gary Gensler and the rest of the SEC chairman, chair people, uh, persons voted unanimously to move forward with same day settlement citing distributed ledger technology is indeed underway. The ever-increasing pace of advancements in technology, including distributed ledger technology. 
Further shortening the standard settlement cycle in the near future may be both desirable and feasible. Indeed, some such efforts are already underway. That was 22 years ago, and the efforts were already underway. And they go on in this to vote unanimously. Affirmation, confirmation, and allocation. Commissioners vote uh, on the division's recommendations uh, to amend the Securities Exchange Act uh, uh, on clearing and settling. Yes. 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 Uh, yes, uh, the recommendation is approved unanimously. There you have it. And that was two years ago. And now we're talking about it. And here's a reminder right here. No utility until legal clarity. XRP will be the first digital asset to unveil its liquidity business case. I think that is absolutely spot on from Andrew DeVillibus here. Uh, it says here, current cryptocurrency, digital assets, distributed ledger technology, DLT, and other innovations increasingly are integral parts of our discussions about the evolving financial services industry as company stakeholders and policymakers assess the challenges of implementation and regulation. It's all coming ladies and gentlemen and here is a quick clip from that same token 49 conference where this gentleman right here uh uh ragalampathy from circle jokes that ripple save crypto i'm and with circle from which makes usdc and i'll get into uh, a special reason as to why i'm wearing this uh special jacket today uh towards the end um Brooks, tell me a little bit about uh you've been in this industry we've known each other for a long time you've been in this industry for a while you were at, at the origin, a traditional finance guy, right? Um, so, you know, like we are still at the very sort of early stages, even though it seems well advanced to us, of crypto and its entry into finance. What do you think we need to do to move us forward a bit more uh, faster? We've only got like a couple hundred million users. We obviously want to go into the billion, similar to financial services. We think we have the special magic to, to unlock financial services for a bigger population to make it cheaper, faster, and better. What do you think we still need to do? Yeah, one of the things I think, and I've watched capital markets develop in the region, you know, since the early 90s when the fixed income markets, equity markets were early, and some of these markets were very closed around. And one thing that was critical overall from the very beginning was to uh, push on the regulatory front, to make sure that regulators in every country understood the value of what you were bringing to the table uh, with a product, with a certain market. And in our case, with digital assets, blockchain, and, and, and crypto, to make sure they understand what is in it for them, why is it a good thing, and, and why should their regime and country uh, buy into some of the things that, that we're setting up, whether it's trading operations or moving value across borders. Um, and we've always found that you're better off being in dialogue and being part of that process. And that's true in financial services. Um, I spent a little bit of time at Uber between the two, and that was the same kind of game, different industry. But you had to convince local regulators that what you were offering was important for them and their citizens. Okay, great. And I spent some time with uh, Brooks and the, and the Ripple EL team the other day, and I shook the hand of their CLO for uh, jokingly saving crypto. <laughs> yeah, and they actually have, right? And thank God they've had the money in the coffers to go get it done. And the wherewithal and, you know, uh, the courage to take it all on. Look at this chart right here. I love this because <laughs> Jim Knox says XRP will crash hard soon. Mickle says, run, you know, and I said, the kind of crash we've all been waiting for. Ripple Van Wiggle says, I'm out, you know, but if you look at this, you'll see very quickly that this is an inverted chart, which means it is completely upside down. So the high prices are down here and the low prices are up here, right? So uh, this does, when you flip these charts over sometimes, you can really start to see, wow, that does look like it's going to break down. But in fact, it's not. It's going to break up. And it's much harder to feel that way psychologically when the chart is actually reverted back to its actual right direction, right? And then you're like, wow, I hope it goes up. But when you're looking at this, it does look like a sure sign things are going down, doesn't it? but that's because it's inverted. So that down version is actually an up version. The question is, is will it go three bucks, five bucks, 15 bucks or more? I don't know, 
but I'm so glad that we're all here together to find out together. Love being on this journey with all of you. This is a remarkable time for all of us, and I think 24, 25 are going to be a different kind of year than the last four have been. At least that's my hope for all of us, and it's certainly not financial advice. We're headed into the Freedom Zone, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you will join us because we're going to go into the real problems that are happening right now in all of our lives. You need to know about it. It's about the food. It's about control. And you need to be aware of it because we need to do whatever we can to empower ourselves with enough knowledge to know what the people who want to harm us are trying to do so we can do what we need to to protect ourselves and our family. I'll catch all of you in the Freedom Zone digperspectives.com you can join us for next to nothing just go to digperspectives.com click that button click that freedom zone right there and come on in all right welcome